every single dude that I, that I knew that was about it, about it, in business, they were disciplined. Right? Discipline. Now this one right here is spooky because I met a lot of men who were very successful financially and they thought because they had money they didn't have to be disciplined and they end up losing everything. They end up losing everything. They weren't disciplined, right? They became alcoholics, right? Um, sex addicts, right? Um, didn't move with integrity. That's the one thing, man, I love about, man, y'all, man, for real, I'm telling y'all, y'all got to get with the right crew. Y'all, when y'all hear Ma talk about getting up and working out, it don't got nothing, man, I promise y'all. It don't have nothing to do with, like, I ain't following no man because he got muscles. I'm following Ma because he got muscles that come from discipline. Like, I promise you, you call Ma, like, yo, Ma, the podcast, you heard the podcast. Yo, Ma, we want you to go see this. They try to, you know what I'm saying, get Ma to see his billboard that's out there. Trying to trick Ma. Ma, like, I can't do it. They're like, we need you to come right now. He's like, this is my workout time. Whatever you're trying to show me, work out. I got to work out. I'm trying to get on this scale and be the same height, the same uh, weight I was when I was coming out of college. That's discipline. I was like, you on a scale when? He's like, every day I was like, that's my, that's my problem. How you been on the scale? How you been on the scale about five years? I'm just guessing. I'm, I'm uh, 189. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, I feel 189. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The way my pants fit. 189. All right, let's go. Here's where me and my wife get into it. So my wife was like, first she said, you know, um, you need more structure. I was like, am I coming? I, was like, I don't need no more structure. Structure ain't the problem. I'll go show you a whole bunch of structure. I said, I got it, sweetheart. I'm not willing to make the adjustment, but I don't run the type of company where I want to get up every day and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? See, like, I don't want to get up every day and be nobody boss. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want to get up and micromanage nobody, right? So the challenge is, at some point, you're going to have to learn to be disciplined. You're going to have to learn if you say you're going to wake up at 8 o'clock, you're going to get up at 8 o'clock, no matter how you feel. Like, you got to be disciplined. And to get to the next level of success, you can't just have energy when you got energy. I want to make sure y'all catch that. If you're running a business and it's 365, then 365, you got you got to wake up every day and you got to go get it. You got Why? Because if you don't hunt, you don't eat. So here's the deal. If you hunt it in January and you got enough food for January, you don't get to chill February. You got to get up in February and go get enough food. And so what a lot of us do, we aren't disciplined. Like we're not self-motivated. We're not self-regulated. We need outside people to push up. And that's not how the creator made us. He didn't make us for all all the people to be over us. So here's what I told my wife. Sweetheart, if another human can tell you to get up and go to work and do what you're supposed to do, why can't you pretend like if you need another human, be, be the, be the human. You be that human. If you need somebody to tell you you need to lose 100 pounds, be your own voice to tell yourself you need to. Don't go pay nobody $50,000 to lose weight when you can do it yourself. And I'm not saying don't get a person, but at some point you got to cut that person off. Why? Because if you don't have personal discipline, you'll never get to the next level. The next level is not something that's far away. Like Maul said, the next level is execution is not something that, you know, we do. It's something that we are. And most of us aren't disciplined. It's like you just go like you, you you drink, so you just go, you you can't tell yourself, you know what, I'm not mad that you drink, but you gotta drink during the weekday. Like you drinking in the morning before you go to work. You he gone now, he's no longer with us. You drinking in the afternoon, you drinking at night. Like I'm feeling you like to drink, but like all day, every day, the weekend, the weekday, and some of you there are things you like, you have absolutely no control. You are like a slave to you. You were a slave to your personality. You were a slave to some of your vices. You were a slave to some of the things you like. You were a slave. You have absolutely no control. And what I'm telling you is the reason why we fast from time to time is not that we have to fast, but at some point you got to fast because you got to tell the flesh who's in control. I'm in control. You're not in control. I know you don't want to wake up. You don't have an option. Get up. We trying to eat. There's a certain lifestyle we want. You think I want to get up at 3 o'clock? I put up a video. Nikki, I don't know what happened. I miscommunicated with Nikki this morning. I'm supposed to do the videos at 3, or either I give them to Nikki, and then she'll do them some kind of way. I don't know. I don't know. I must have went to sleep, woke up. I didn't know what time it was. So I sent Nikki what I wanted to say, and I looked this morning. It was I sent it at 12 o'clock at night, midnight. I thought I sent it like 10, 30, 11. So when I got up, it was like 3-something our time. And I was like, shoot, I ain't put my video on. 
and I put the video up and I heard some in the back of my mind say, oh, it's okay, you're on vacation. I said, what? Oh, it's okay. They'll understand. I said, little man who getting up at three to read my stuff because he got somewhere to go, he don't know that I'm on vacation. He don't know that I'm here. That don't got nothing to do with his life. He don't know I'm in Mexico. I ain't posting no video. He don't have the slightest idea. He just know wherever he live in the world at my three o'clock, he uses that stuff to do what he's supposed to do. And he's sitting there waiting. And an hour go by. He like, I guess he ain't posting today. Listen to me. It was, I was so late posting. I almost didn't want to post because I was in Paris. I'm like, I'm about an hour and 50 minutes, two minutes off. I'm two hours off. God said, post it anyway. That's discipline. I don't got to post no videos. I'm way past posting videos. Posting videos was something we did to blow up. We blew up. I don't got to post videos. I don't post videos to get motivated. I don't post videos to get inspired. I post videos to be disciplined. Get your butt up and post a video. Either you post it the night before to Nikki or and she does it, or when you get up at 3 o'clock and you do it. That's discipline. That's a certain time frame that I'm supposed to eat and certain things I'm supposed to eat and then not eat after a certain time. I'm making money. I can eat whatever I want, but I'm trying to discipline myself because there was a time I did not discipline myself. You are not where you want to be, not because you need any more gifts. You don't need nothing else. You need to discipline yourself. You need to learn to tell you no. You keep talking about everybody else you can't tell no. You can't tell you no. You can't tell you stop. You can't tell you quit. You can't tell you nothing. You got to get to a point where you're disciplined. And what separates the talented, if everybody's talented, if everybody's equally gifted, what separates us is discipline. We break through and we break them. So everybody always asks me, ET, what was it like being homeless? I don't remember. What was it like eating out of trash cans? I don't remember. I ain't on that. Let me tell y'all the hardest part of my life the hardest part of my life was not being homeless. I ain't had no dreams or no goals. I didn't want nothing. Eating out of trash cans wasn't the hardest thing I've ever done. The hardest thing I ever did was get my GED, go to college, study every doggone day and still fail. That's hard. That's hard. When you writing a paper for three, four weeks, you turn it in and you get, still get a 2.0. That's hard. It's hard when you're in a library and you're studying and you read and you take the test and you get a 55. That's hard. So what I want you to understand about the breakthrough is that 90% is work, but the last 10% that's fight. Listen to me. You don't get a breakthrough by working. You get a breakthrough when you fight. And I had to fight. I had to stay up all night. Listen to me very closely. When I first started speaking, I remember they used to be like, bro, we gave 1500 at most. I remember trying to break through in this industry. I remember speaking and speaking and speaking, getting a four-year degree. It took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. Breakthrough. It wasn't being homeless. It wasn't running the streets. It wasn't hanging out with people I shouldn't hang out with. The hardest part of my life was actually trying, putting forth effort, and still not getting my goal. That was the hardest part. The hardest part was going to doggone school. Going, I dropped out of doggone Detroit here before. I didn't go to school, so when I got kicked out, I wasn't tripping. But you mean to tell me I'm going to every class and I'm still failing? You mean to tell me I'm reading every paper and I'm still failing? That's the hard part. The breakthrough is the hardest part because the breakthrough is not about the X's and O's. The breakthrough is not about the weight room. The breakthrough is not about studying the plays. The breakthrough, that last 10% is all mental toughness. The last 10%, the breakthrough is not about being better than them. You're already better than them. You're just not better than them mentally. This ain't got to do with nothing physical. When you get to the top of the top of your game, it ain't physical, y'all. It is not the darkest moment that's the problem. You the problem. And your perspective is the problem. You thought you was just going to have a dream and a goal, and you was just going to wake up and just walk into the sunset. You're like, dream, boom. It don't work like that. You have a dream, and then life, life punks you. Life punks you and say, do you really want this? I'm going to give your wife MS. Do you really want this? Five of your aunts going to die of cancer. Do you really want this? You're going to lose friends. Do you really want this? Your mama going to be pissed when you write the book about your family. Do you really want this? 
Do you really want this? Cousins gonna abandon you. People that you used to be like this with gonna think you bougie and don't wanna deal with you. That's, it's a part of it. But I paid too much. If I was gonna quit, I would've quit in the abandoned building when I wanted to commit suicide and take my life. And I don't talk about that because I don't want to get nobody ideas. I should've quit when, when I heard my voice say, your mama don't want you, your own daddy don't want you, take your life. I got through that. So why I'm gonna quit over a grade, a, a F on a grade? Why would I quit because I didn't do well on the master's degree? Come on. And so I'm telling y'all, you have come too far to quit now. You have invested too much to quit now. You have lost too much to quit now. Get a, get a reward for your pain. Don't cry about it. Don't whine about it. Get a reward for it. I study my competition. Oh, my man, he fired. My man, fired. My man, oh, fire. My man, oh, his use of word. Oh, my man, his presence. Oh, this is phenomenal. But when I studied all of them, it take three weeks to a month to get their stuff. I said, bingo, I got them. I got them. I'm going to go on YouTube and give my stuff away. Because guess what? If you're going through a divorce, you ain't got three weeks to wait on no doggone video. If your mama got cancer or you got cancer, you ain't got three weeks to a month to wait for your video. So I'm saying they, they better than me, but they will not outwork me. I will get up every day and put some on. Three o'clock in the doggone morning. I'm doing it every day and three o'clock in the morning. I'm telling y'all. The breakthrough, I'm going to break these boys. Why? Because where they come from, they couldn't get up at 3 o'clock in the morning if they wanted to. They smarter than me. They come from privilege. They got the language. They got the code. They got the rules. They grew up in it. But they will not get up earlier than me. They will not put out more content than me. Be smoke. I was homeless. I was knocked out. I was kicked out of school. I was told never to return. I did this in the midst of trials, in the midst of tribulations. Nobody gave me this. I earned it. Life wasn't a crystal stair for me. Didn't nobody give me a network. I, I earned a network. I know Warren Buffett because I worked my way to Warren Buffett. I worked my way to Dan Gilbert. I worked my way to the NBA. I worked my way to the NFL. Everybody say, E, how did you crack the code? I grinded my way through the code. That's how I cracked it. I got up every day at three. At Monday I grind, Tuesday I grind. When I don't care what the economy is doing. I don't care who the president is. I don't care who the governor is. I don't care who the mayor is. My mama ain't counting on the governor. My wife ain't counting on the president of the United States of America. My wife ain't counting on the mayor. My wife ain't counting on the commissioner. My wife counting on me. When I walk out that house, she's counting on me to bring home the bacon. I beast mode my way to number one. I be small my way to number one. Then I put the sweet stuff out and I saw people start feeling it. Then I start dropping hip hop on them. I'm like, I got them now. They don't even know, they don't even know who Kendrick Lamar is. Got them. They don't even know who Pac is. Got them. They don't even know how to put Biggie in there. Got them. I didn't get them. I didn't get them with talent. I didn't beat them with talent. I looked at their weaknesses and I said, boom, they will not outwork me. I'll go quicker, I'll go harder, I'll go longer, I'll go faster. A game, all I got is an A game. I ain't got a B game, I ain't got a C game. When I finish, people are relying on me. Some of y'all, when you get on the field, you forgot. You forgot what it was like when you was hustling in high school playing ball. When you were in college hustling to get to this point. I ain't smart. It took me 12 years to get a four year degree. My book is a bestseller and I, 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 I failed English three times in college. But the difference between me and most people is you might be sweeter than me. You might be bigger than me. You might grind. Listen to me. I don't know. You might have money. I don't know where you come from, but you will not outwork me every single time. So what I need y'all to do, man, Imano, Imano, man to man, I need y'all the first week y'all come out, I need y'all to come out so doggone strong that, that when teams come on the field, come on. Don't just say it. Lock the gate. Don't just say it. Don't just say it. Sound cute. You wearing a t-shirt. Don't just say it. Lock that joke for real. Get to the point this season that when they come out on the field, they're like, we don't even want this. I want them to be scared. Can we make that happen? I'm talking about beast mode. I want you to come out, no laughing, no playing. I want y'all to do something like y'all ain't never done before. I want y'all to go out on the field and have y'all, whatever y'all come up with, y'all little chant, whatever y'all do. I 
want y'all to just come out and just all y'all stand and look at the other side. I just want you to strike fear in their doggone heart. People rock with me because I know what you've been through and I didn't quit. I know what you've been through and I didn't stop. I know what you've been through and I didn't whine. You know what I did? I got my reward for it. And not only did I get a reward for it, my wife got a reward for it. My kids got a reward for it. They're going to live a different life because of what I went through. And had I quit, I would have been just like my father who left me with nothing. I would have been just like my grandfather who quit. So I've been in circles and in families and environments where people take L's. I don't take L's no more. No more L's in my life. I, all we do is win, win, win. But guess what? Here's what I don't like about us sometimes. You want to exercise your freedom on the world, but you don't want to exercise it on yourself. Oh, you'll shut the world down for telling you what you can't do, but you won't say nothing to you when you don't do what you're supposed to do. You're not, you, uh, you're not getting up when you're supposed to get up. You procrastinate, but you let you slide. But let the government do you like that. You ready for it. <laughs> All out. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. Fight, fight, do whatever you feel like you personally need to do, but do something to you too. You want to hold them accountable? Hold yourself accountable too. You know you're not making the money you're supposed to make. You dressing up, you got the car, the house you can't afford because you're trying to prove something. You live in America, you ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. You can actually do what you dream of doing. <laughs> this America, you ain't got to play like you got it. This is America, you can really have it. But you know why we want to play like we got it? Because it's easier to play like you got it than really do the work to get it. So I came for one thing today. I came to tell you we live in a great country. 75% of the work has already been done. 50% by this country, 25% by the creator. You got to do your part, though. You ain't going to never blow up if you don't do your part. And I'm standing here today because I did my part. Now, I didn't do it up to 25. I ain't going to lie. I was homeless. I was a high school dropout. I was a college dropout. I was making stupid, dumb decisions. Credit was towed up. I ain't had no money in the bank. But one day I woke up and was like, yo, E, bro, you live in America, bro. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Here's my only goal for Eric Thomas. I want you to die on E. If you could be the best in the world, then be the best in the world. I never knew if I could be the number one motivation speaker in the world, but I woke up one day and was like, yo, let's pursue it. And last year, y'all, I challenged myself. I said, Eric, yeah, I know you couldn't read or write when you was a teenager, but you grown now. You grown now. They, they can say the word for you on Instagram. <laughs> like you can get dictionary.com and they can tell you what the word, grow up. Go in the studio. Go and learn. And so now, now, now I said, 2022? E. Now it's time. You should have been in the Lion King. My voice is all over the world. There's no reason it wasn't on the Lion King. I just didn't go over there and demand that I need to be over there. So I'm writing a script for Netflix or Hulu. Why? Because I start, you know, in COVID, I wouldn't watch TV. I started watching COVID. I was like, oh, I can produce that. So I'm doing a show called Torn that we're writing right now. And it's the love story of me and my wife when we hooked up when I was 15 and she was 16 and our journey from the streets of Detroit to number one in the world. Can I say this to y'all? I could have been doing this years ago, but I never held myself accountable. I held my biological father accountable for not being in my life. I held my mama accountable for getting pregnant at 17. I held the Detroit public school system responsible for not teaching me what I thought they should teach me. I held everybody responsible but Eric Thomas. The day you start holding yourself accountable is the day that everything in your life is going to change. Write that down. I'm going to hold myself accountable. Text yourself. Text yourself. I'm going to hold myself accountable. Look, I can leave now. We're going to go through a couple slides, but that's it. If you hold you accountable when you leave, if you discipline you, if you put you on punishment, if you determine that you're going to learn this product, that you're going to learn this industry, that you're going to take everything that you were given and take it to another level, I guarantee you in this country there's nothing you can't have. I'm hurt. I'm mad at myself because I could have been doing this. So, number one, here's what I need you to do. What I want you to do for me is I want you to write the vision. All right? And make it plain. I want you to write the vision. Like flat out. There's not one thing I got out. Do y'all know the joy of me seeing a father with his three-year-old, his five-year-old, and they watching my stuff together, and little man saying, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy, E.T. You know where I got that from? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan said he played basketball so well, 
so that wives who didn't even understand the game would come and watch him. And if the wife and the kids came, the whole family would be at the game. He wanted to play so well that the whole family would come out and watch him play. So I said, if Mike could do that, I could do that. Write the vision. What's your vision? A lot of you, you struggling because you don't even know. You're waking up every day with nothing to do. You're just getting up. You don't even know what your goals are. You don't even know. Write your vision. Some of you wear stuff. You do stuff because other people are doing it. No, stop doing that. What do you want? In Michigan, y'all, I just moved to Cali, I told you, two years ago. There was a young lady who came to my house with her mom, and she walked in my house, and she looked at my house, and she was like, no way. Her mother was like, don't be rude, sweetheart. She was like, I'm not being rude, no way. And I was like, what you mean, no way? She's like, no way you live in this house. I was like, what you mean by that? She's like, how, how big is this house? I'm like, 2,300 square feet. Like, my house in Michigan, you could walk in the front door and see the whole house. She was like, but I thought you were. I am. <laughs> I am ETD if I preach it. You're right. And I am wealthy. You're absolutely right. But I love this house because everybody here is in the working community. And I love living in the working community. My next door neighbor is a firefighter. His wife is a teacher. I love living in this community. My next door neighbor is a firefighter who cut my grass, who shovel my snow. Anything break in my house, he come and fix it. I can't move nowhere else because I can't find another neighbor like this. <laughs> I love my neighbor. How many of you live in some communities where you can't stand your next door neighbor? Just be real. Raise your hand. That's a terrible experience. So she was thinking and she was right. If I had a low self-esteem and I hadn't wrote a vision for myself and made it plain, I probably would have moved to a different community. But moving to a wealthy community was not a part of my vision, my plan. My vision and my plan is being married. I want to be blissful in my marriage. I want my wife still to desire me. I want to still desire my wife. I want us to act like we did when we were high school. That's my vision. That's my vision. My vision ain't necessarily a watch. It ain't nothing wrong with watches. They're investments. There's nothing wrong with jewelry. It's an investment. But that's not what I want. So I'm not going to let society. And let me say this to you. You like, Eve, what does that have to do with anything? Well, the energy you put in toward impressing somebody is the energy you're wasting to do what you're supposed to be doing for you. That's why it matters. Because now you're wasting energy on getting six figures or seven figures or eight figures or nine figures on trying to impress somebody, and energy is only going to go one way. It don't go both ways. So if you're wasting time trying to impress people, it means you're not wait, you're not using time to impress yourself. Listen to me very closely. I got up this morning. I flew here to speak for my boy Cole. Cole called me. E, I need you to, I got you, bruh. Then I'm flying back home tonight. When I get home tonight at midnight and I get my wife in that car and we drive back to our house, when I go to sleep tonight, man, I'm going to sleep so well. I don't care what you think of my presentation. I'm going to be so excited because I walked through that hall and there were people who saw me and they said, yo, E.T., bruh, I've been watching you. And I saw them. I saw the look on their face. I didn't even make them do it. I was like, pull out your camera, bruh. Let's get a pic. E. I'm like, bro, come on, let's remember this. You're going to be telling somebody you know, I was with E.T. And they're going to say, no, you weren't. I already know how it go. They're not going to believe. So let's just get this pic real quick. So when they start saying it ain't the truth, you can just show them the pic real quick. Or when it's my birthday, you can post it like, E.T., happy birthday. That's my dude. And you can get some credit and get a couple more followers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I know the drill. Or you can knock on the door and they like, nope, we don't want to buy this product for you. And you like, you know, E.T., that's my boy. They like, come inside. You listen to E.T., I listen to E.T. Come on. So it has nothing to do with this. I'm going to go to bed tonight and feel real good. You know why? Because a part of my vision is making people feel good. And when I walked through that door, I took a picture with everybody that wanted to take a picture with. I didn't run back to the green room acting like I'm big time. So I'm going to be able to sleep at night knowing I made my dreams come true. And the problem with a lot of you, your energy is being wasted on showing other people who you are. All right, you're the only thing in the way of igniting your power, your purpose, and your why. I'm just being real. Every character that you read about is a human with their little challenges. But they operate in their superpower. So the second one is, 
it's going to be tough to make good decisions and be with people who making bad decisions. I got a friend who uh, at 40 years old, he's probably got 4% body fat. He played uh, high school football. He played college football, was supposed to go to the pros. He should have been in the NFL, but when he got to college, he started hanging with guys who like to smoke, drink, and fight. And they got in fights every single year. Freshman, he got into a fight. Sophomore, he got in a fight. Junior year, he got into a fight. And the fight was so bad that they stopped the dude and they killed him. And he was on the front page of the newspaper and on ESPN. And when he would go to the NFL for practice, the NFL player, the NFL teams would say, oh, you got what on your record? Oh, no, we can't. Uh-uh, we can't. So I don't care how many good decisions you make. If you're hanging with people who are not making good decisions, a negative plus a positive equal a negative. So I want to make sure you understand that. When you go to math class. <laughs> Next time you go to math, pay attention. A positive plus a negative. A positive times a negative. That's, it's a negative. So the second thing you need to do is you need to select the people in your circle of influence who are going to help you make your dreams become a reality. Let me just be honest with you. I ain't trying to dog nobody out. But if, pe if your friends uh, are putting you in a position where you drinking and you smoking and you high, they're not your real friends. I'm not, I'm, I'm not su suggesting that you stop hanging with them. My boy Anthony Flynn, my guy, my business partner. Anthony Flynn said, if you want to make it to the New York Times, you got to hire Rory. So I had a friend who connected me with a friend to help me make my dreams become a reality. If you have people in your circle, I don't care what they call themselves, friend. They're not a friend, they are a foe. If the person is not helping you to elevate, but what they're doing is destroying you, you can label it friend, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but they're destroying you and you are a fool to let somebody destroy you in your dreams. And let me tell you why. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. But at some point, I, I don't care what we all believe in this room. This is what we all have in common. We all believe we're going to die. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> Everybody in this room, amen. I don't care. How, I don't care if you're working out every day, you're not going to make it to 250 working out. It's not about to happen. I don't care what kind of drink you, look, you, want, you got your little green juice you drink, you can drink it till you're blue in the face. You're not going to make it to 200. I'm just being honest. You're not going to make it to 200. And if you make it to 100, you probably won't have your youth. So because you don't live long, you don't have time not to make your dreams and goals become reality. Every single day, because you don't know how long you have, every single day should be about what can I do? What can I have? What can I be? And you got to hang out with other people who are on the same trajectory you're on. I'm just being real, y'all. I'm, I'm from Detroit, right? Detroit ain't won. We ain't won. A, we won one playoff game since 1957. 1957. I just want to show y'all something. The second one is friends. Say friends or foe. Come on, friends or foe. There's no, it's nothing in the middle. <laughs> like there's no middle thing. <laughs> they either a friend and they're elevating you, or they're a foe. They tearing you down. There's no middle ground. So, 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 so I'm a Lion fan, right? And so, you know, years ago, everybody would just, oh, Stafford is the worst quarterback. Stafford getting hit. Stafford bringing us down fourth quarter, two seconds left. He trying to throw a touchdown. hit, throwing a touchdown. They're like, Stafford is whack. We can't stand Stafford. Just get rid of him. And if we get rid of him, we're going to win some games. Stafford left the Lions. He went to the Rams, an organization that want to win, an organization that pay people to win, an organization that has won before. They, they brought in the best of the best. And in one year, he left the Lions and he won the Super Bowl. One year. One year, he, lost a, he left a losing franchise went to a winning franchise and won a Super Bowl. Now he got all kind of AT&T commercial, he got Pizza Pizza, he got Ford one F-150 train, he ain't never had that when he was with the Lions. Why? Because when you're hanging with losers, you lose. But when you're hanging with winners, you win. And there is no middle ground. There's no middle ground. Now, we gotta be honest. You may like hanging with people who bring you down. That's okay. Keep hanging with them. I'm not suggesting you stop. 
but don't lie to yourself and say that a foe is a friend. Call it what it is. My man don't mean me no good. We doing dumb stuff, stuff that could put us in jail, stuff that could... <laughs> So let me just put it like this to you. Go do your homework when you get a chance. Alcohol is going is, is to tear your brain. It's going to destroy your brain. Marijuana, you can call it whatever you want to call it. A study show. It will, tear, it will make you lose brain cells. Now, some of you in this room, you ain't got enough to be losing. Okay, you want to be... You want to be smart about this, okay? You ain't got a whole bunch of them to be losing. I'm just being real. I was one of them. Right? High school dropout. GED. I'm not playing. I'm not here to play. I'm here to save somebody life. I'm not here to be liked. There are those of you who you not you not already, your, your IQ ain't that high already. Don't do stuff to destroy it. Just being honest. Put yourself in a winning situation. Does that make sense? Put yourself in a winning situation. Right? Now some of you, maybe you got enough brain cells to lose some. You're just that sweet. But a lot of us in this room, we don't have that. So what we want to do is we don't want to do stuff that's going to destroy us and bring us down. We want to do the stuff that elevates us. Does that make sense? Now, we're not better than other people who do it. But I, this is what I tell people all the time. I went from a high school dropout, GED to a PhD. I'm not better than nobody. I am more prepared than some people. I made different decisions than some people. My, it doesn't mean my character is better. It don't mean I'm going to be in heaven. Good night. Not, that's not what it means. But it means I made some decisions that make life easier for me. And let me tell you something. I'm a high school dropout. I hate school. Getting a PhD has opened up doors for me that weren't open when I was a high school dropout. It was just a decision that I made. Does that make sense? When you say you got a PhD, it's just certain things you don't have to say. I don't have to negotiate no more. When I was like high school dropout, I had to negotiate. When I had a four year degree, I had to negotiate. When you get a PhD, you have to negotiate. When you're a New York Times bestseller, you don't negotiate. You say, this is what my price is. They either take it or they leave it. I'm not negotiating. The university didn't negotiate how much I had to pay for my PhD. There was no negotiating. <laughs> We didn't negotiate it. It's like, this is how much it cost. The dissertation, there was no negotiating with the dissertation. There was no negotiating. So I didn't, I didn't get to negotiate. So now I've earned the right to charge you what I'm charging. You either pay it or you don't. You don't add stuff. When you make good decisions, you make other people make good decisions when they deal with you. When you make bad decisions, people can make bad decisions on you. Does that make sense? I, okay, so, so, so just let me be honest. This is what I mean. You go to jail, you made some bad decisions. If they decide they don't want to feed you, they don't have to feed you and can't let nobody do about it. If they decide they want to put you in a isolation, they can put you in isolation and your mama can't do nothing about it. You made a decision that was a bad decision and now other people get to treat you badly because you treat yourself badly. I'm just being real with you. That's what happens. I need you to be clear. When you don't take care of yourself, you teach other people how or not to take care of you. So when you take care of yourself and you make good decisions, you surround yourself with people now who see you are a good decision maker and they treat you differently. And let me tell you what happens 90% of the time when I walk away and they say, no, this is how it's going to be. And I walk away. I usually get a call 24 hours later. Mr. Tom is about the picture taking. It's just, we thought it through and it's not necessary. You just speak. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? All right. So number two, we're gonna we're gonna choose our friends wisely. We're gonna do what? Now listen to me. I'm gonna say a name. Raise your hand if you ever heard of it before. Usain Bolt. You ever heard of that name before? Good. What team does he run for? Jamaica. Let me say this to you guys, and I mean this with all my heart. I grew up. I'm a '70s kid. I grew up in the '80s watching Flo Jo, Carl Lewis, Michael Johnson. Can I be honest with y'all? You couldn't beat the U.S. Olympic team. You couldn't beat us. This guy named Usain Bolt came out of nowhere. He started beating our best players. He beat our best runners, y'all. He was winning the goal. He was so sweet. He would beat them and be looking at them while he was running. <laughs> he like, nah. They couldn't do nothing. But guess what? There were some other people in Jamaica. Be careful who you hang with. There were some other people in Jamaica, some men who started training with Usain Bolt. And then all of a sudden, you, you, Usain both beat us. Then all of a sudden, the four by four relay, now they beat us. And then I guess the women found out what they were doing and the women started practicing with him. 
All right, you're the only thing in the way of igniting your power, your purpose, and your why. I'm just being real. Every character that you read about is a human with their little challenges. But they operate in their superpower.